subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Equatorial Spitting Cobra. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger and this is my puppy, Hero. I wonder where that frog is going. Let's follow it too. Careful, Hero. You'll scare the frog away. Huh? Something else is hidden inside the bush? Ah! A snake! Better keep a distance, Hero. It's a snake in our garden. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Yikes! Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cobra you found is an equatorial spitting cobra, also known as a black spitting cobra. It is called a spitting cobra because it is able to shoot venom from its fangs. Venom is a toxin, like poison, and is found in some animals such as cobras. Venom can be passed to a person or another animal through a bite or sting. Many cobras defend themselves by injecting venom through their bite, but a spitting cobra prefers to spit or spray venom at a predator's eyes to scare them away. The spitting cobra wiggles its head the same way your eyes move. This helps the cobra's aim when it sprays its venom. That's scary! Actually, spitting cobras are shy animals. They only attack when they feel threatened. Still, equatorial spitting cobras can shoot venom up to three meters away. So it's best to keep your distance. I'll make sure to remember that, Katie. Equatorial spitting cobras live in different forests in Southeast Asia, where they eat small animals like lizards, frogs, and rats. Hmm. I don't think it's safe for us to be near the spitting cobra. We should return the cobra to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a special friend with you today. Here, you'll need these if you're going to be near that spitting cobra. Glasses? Safety glasses, Leo. The venom from spitting cobras can harm your eyes. That's why it's very important to wear these glasses for protection. When threatened, the spitting cobra will aim to shoot its venom at an enemy's eyes. The venom that the spitting cobra sprays causes pain to the eyes and sometimes blindness. You will know when you've gotten too close to a cobra when it flares the flap of skin around its head and neck. This flap of skin is called a hood. A cobra will spread its hood when it feels threatened. I see. We'll be careful not to get too close to the cobra. We're trying to find the spitting cobra's home. Do you know where we should look? Spitting cobras like to live near water, in burrows or under rocks, where they can hunt for food. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Ranger Rocky. What's wrong with the cobra? The spitting cobra is getting into a defensive pose. Why does it keep flicking its tongue? Spitting cobras have a very good sense of smell. They use their tongues to pick up scents in the air. Do you think it might have picked up the scent of a predator? <laughs> <gasps> they don't look very friendly. They are mongooses. It says here that the mongoose is the cobra's natural predator. Did you see that? The cobra sprayed venom at that mongoose, but 
the mongoose looks fine. It says here the mongoose is resistant or immune to cobra venom. That means cobra venom has no effect on the mongoose. What do we do now? We're surrounded. I'll clear a path for us. Thanks, Katie. Hold on tight, everyone. Goodbye, little friend. We did it. We found the spinning cobra's home. Great job, everyone. Hooray! Yay! found an equatorial spitting cobra in our garden. We learned that the spitting cobra can spray venom when threatened. That's why it's best to keep a safe distance from the spitting cobra. So we went to the forest and brought it to its natural home, far away from other humans. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Indian star tortoise. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Let's play soccer, Hero. Get the ball. Hey, where can it be? I saw the ball going in this direction. Did you find it, Hero? Hey, that's not my football. It's hard and smooth. It looks like a turtle. What a pretty shell you have. I wonder what kind of turtle you are. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, Mr. Turtle. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. This tortoise is an Indian star tortoise. That's a very suitable name for this animal. The Indian star tortoise comes from India, Sri Lanka, and parts of Pakistan. And as you have noticed, the Indian star tortoise has star-like markings on its round shell. They look amazing, but what are those markings for? With the star-like markings on its shell, this tortoise can hide very well among grasses or plants. Their hard shells help to protect them, but they are still preyed upon by large birds and reptiles such as snakes. So Indian star tortoises have to hide themselves well from these sharp predators. Indian star tortoises normally live in dry scrub forests or grasslands. They can hide much better there. These places also provide the right kind of food for them, like grasses, flowers, and fallen fruit. Then we have to bring this Indian star tortoise back home, where it can hide and find the right food to eat. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Rocky. Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the Scrub Forest. Ah, an Indian star tortoise. It's one of the prettiest tortoises I've ever seen, Ranger Rocky. Apart from its beauty, the Indian star tortoise is also gentle and shy. Unfortunately, the peaceful and nature beauty of Indian star tortoises are also the reasons why people like to keep them as pets. And in many countries, it is illegal to keep Indian star tortoises as pets. Illegal? You mean we're not allowed to keep them as pets? 
Correct, Leo. Though it's not allowed, there are still people who catch these tortoises and sell them around the world. Indian star tortoises get stressed and cold when they are taken away from their home and sent to other countries. Even if an Indian star tortoise survives the journey, its new home may not be suitable for it. Indian star tortoises do not like damp or cold places. They cannot breathe properly in such places. Poor tortoises! Your tortoise must have escaped from its owner and landed up in your garden somehow. You have to bring it back to a place that is dry and warm. Good luck, Junior Rangers! Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky! Come on, guys. Let's continue on foot. Look, Leo. There is a man over there. What is he doing? Hey! He picked up an Indian star tortoise. Why is he running? Maybe he's an illegal pet trader hunting for Indian star tortoises. So he might take the poor tortoise to another country and sell it. Hero, wait for us. Oh, wow, there are so many Indian star tortoises here. I hope they're all right. Don't worry, Leo. A tortoise will protect itself from getting hurt by hiding in its shell. Luckily, these tortoises are unharmed from the fall. Phew, let's put them back into the container carefully. Enjoy the sun and the grass, little ones. We did it. We found a home for the Indian star tortoises. Great work, everyone. Yay! <laughs> an Indian star tortoise in our garden. We learned that Indian star tortoises like to live in dry and warm places and that the star patterns on their shells help them hide in grass. So we found a nice home for the tortoise where it can enjoy the sunlight with other Indian star tortoises. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Malayan Water Monitor. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm trying to get better at swimming, but it's not fun practicing alone. Why don't we swim together? You go first, Hero. Wow, you're a natural, Hero. Maybe I should try it your way. Ah! It's a crocodile! There's a small crocodile in the pool. Boy, that was scary. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So if it's not a crocodile, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you found is a water monitor. There are different types of water monitors, and the one in our pool is a Malayan water monitor. I see. Still, it sure looks like a crocodile. It's easy to mistake water monitors for crocodiles, especially when they're in the water. But if you look closely, they're quite different. Water monitors have a shorter snout and a longer, thinner tail as compared to crocodiles. But like crocodiles, water monitors are often found near water and are excellent swimmers. This is because the long, powerful tails of water monitors are used to propel them through the water. Wow! Maybe I should learn how to improve my swimming from a water monitor. <laughs> Don't get too close, though. Water monitors will defend themselves if they feel threatened. I see. So, what kind of food do water monitors eat? They eat small animals, fish, and birds. But if they want to, they can eat anything they can swallow. Yikes! I don't think the water monitor belongs here. What if it eats all the animals in our garden? Well, normally, Malayan water monitors don't live in gardens. 
They live in forests in different countries in South and Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm. I think we should return the water monitor to its natural home in the forest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. I'm sure the water monitor would be happy to go back home. See you downstairs. Ranger Rocky! Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a young water monitor with you. How can you tell it's young, Ranger Rocky? This water monitor is smaller than an adult water monitor. Adult water monitors usually grow to a length of about two and a half to three meters. Now, take a closer look at its body. Young water monitors have special markings on their bodies and are more colorful than the adults. As they grow older, the markings fade. I see. Ranger Rocky, we're trying to return the water monitor to its home. Do you know where we should look? If you want to find the water monitor's home, look for the banks of a large river. Though water monitors are land creatures, they can climb trees. And they are amazing swimmers. So water monitors usually live near river banks. They dig burrows at the water's edge to rest and hide from predators. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Hmm, there are too many rocks on this bank for the water monitor to dig its home. Look, Leo, what about the bank on the other side? Hmm, that looks like a good place, Katie. There aren't as many rocks over there. Come on, everyone, let's go over there. Here we go! Whoa! Leo, the float is losing air! What's happening, Hero? Let me take a look. A large fishing hook pierced the float. We need to get the hook out and fix the float. Leave the fishing hook to me, Leo. Good luck, Katie. There. But we're losing a lot of air. If we don't fix the float, the jeep will sink. We have to cover the hole. What can we use? <laughs> the water monitor covered the hole by sitting on it. Thanks, water monitor. Great. Let's head to the riverbank. We made it! Good work, water monitor! Goodbye, little friend! We did it! We found the water monitor's home! Great job, everyone! Yay! Yay! Today, we found a Malayan water monitor in our garden. We learned that water monitors live in forests where they build their homes near water. So we went to a riverbank in the forest and found its home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The green iguana. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Those are juggling balls, Hero. Check me out. Can you pass me another ball, Hero? Thank you. This is getting difficult. Ah! Oh dear. Let's find those balls, Hero. It's a lizard. 
Whoa, that's a strong tail. I wonder what kind of lizard it is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Smile, lizard. Hi, Katie. So what did you find about the lizard? Hi, Leo. This lizard is a green iguana, also known as the common iguana. Some green iguanas come in different colors, and they can change their color when they get older. The green iguana you found is still young. An adult iguana can grow up to two meters long. Green iguanas are herbivores. They feed on leafy green plants, flowers, and fruits. Green iguanas can be found in rainforests of Central, South America, and the Caribbean. Green iguanas like to spend most of their time in trees. When they are high up in the tree, they can enjoy the sunlight. Sunlight helps them control their body temperature. Then we should bring our new friend back to the trees in the rainforest. Come and join us. The green iguana would love that, Leo. See you downstairs. Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the rainforest. What did you find in your garden this time? Ah, a green iguana. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We want to return it to its natural home. We found out that green iguanas like to be high up on a tree. Correct, Katie. The coloring of their bodies helps them to blend into the trees. However, iguanas still have to keep a constant lookout for predators, like hawks, eagles, or snakes. On top of having excellent eyesight to do just that, green iguanas also have a third eye. The third eye of the green iguana is right on top of the iguana's head. It's also known as the parietal eye. The third eye does not see as normal eyes do, but it can sense movement and change of light. The third eye is particularly useful when iguanas are looking out for hawks and eagles that fly above them. What happens when green iguanas encounter their predators? Green iguanas can put up a good fight with their long tails, sharp teeth, and spines on their bodies. Their dewlaps can be raised to make themselves look bigger, too. Unfortunately, green iguanas face other threats. People like to keep them as pets, but most people don't know how to take proper care of them. Many iguanas in captivity die within a year due to a lack of sunlight or proper food. The green iguana belongs on branches high up in the trees, where it can receive enough sunlight and find food to eat. To find branches that are high enough for plenty of sunlight, you have to go deeper into the rainforest. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. I think this is a good spot for the green iguana. Enjoy, iguana. Let's hope this is the right place for it. Look up there, Leo. It's a hawk, one of the green iguana's predators. Why is the green iguana not running away? Green iguanas blend well into their surroundings. They will stay very still until a predator passes them by. It's too late! Let's use our propellers and distract the hawk. Oh no! Great move, green iguana! Its tail came off. Now let's get away from here. Poor iguana. Don't worry, Leo. Sometimes green iguanas drop their tails when they are trying to escape from a predator. This might help them get away. 
The iguana will even grow a new tail. Really? That's great to hear, Katie. We found the green iguana's home. Great work, everybody. Yay! Yay! a green iguana in our garden. We learned that green iguanas like to stay high up in trees to enjoy the sunlight. We also learned that green iguanas like to live near water. So when there's danger, they can escape by jumping into the water. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hola, exploradores juniors. Check out our Spanish channel by clicking the link in the description below. See you there!